What is up guys, Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. I'm gonna do a little intro, but if you wanna jump ahead to the features, I'm gonna put little chapter links in the description. Procreate is my favorite drawing program and its annual updates are something I really look forward to. This year is a little different though because most of the new update is all about Apple Pencil Hover, which is a new hardware feature limited to the M2 iPad Pros. I'm personally really happy with my M1 iPad Pro, which has been my daily driver for the last 12 months. I even drew a whole comic on it. But for the purposes of this walkthrough, I've gone ahead and bought the latest M2 iPad Pro just so we can all decide whether it's worth buying for this update. Come on, let's get started. All right, here we are, all set up. I have Procreate right here, and let's boot it up. I've thrown in a few artworks, uh, but before we can even start checking out the new features, there are a few settings we need to turn on. So first you wanna go to Settings, Preferences, and then switch on Brush Cursor. Uh, and then go into Gesture Controls, and go to hover down here, and you're gonna switch on touch as well. And that'll make sure you have all the Apple Pencil hover features that come with this. So the first feature is brush cursor, and it's a little hard to see with the default pen that I use. You can see as I, I hover my pencil over, I can see like a little dot down there, which represents all the lines I can make with it, right? Let's pretend some junk is floating around Professor X here. And it's interesting because as I, as I move this around here, I can kind of see some feedback going on with the dynamic brush size and opacity toolbar on the left. As long as my brush is hovering, I can make it go super big and make a line there. Or I can make it go super tiny and do some hatching which doesn't interfere with the natural zoom out and zoom in that you can do with two fingers. It only activates, the brush scaling only activates if your brush is on hover mode over here. But this is a comic book style linear drawing and I don't know if Apple Pencil Hover is as useful to a linear artist as it is to someone who perhaps paints and uses big brushes and scales their brushes a lot. So let's take a look at Apple Pencil Hover in a more painterly composition. So this is an album cover that I'm working for, for a client, and it requires a more painterly approach than I do with my regular comic book art, because it's very like biomorphic. And you can see as I hover my brush, I can make it go really big. So I could go into the sky perhaps, and darken that a little bit. And I actually can kind of see a preview of where the brush is going. See that? It really helps kind of figure out where things are gonna be heading. Here's a wacky brush. Let's use a crazy color. There's a wacky brush and I want it to go bigger. So I'm gonna do that. And it's huge. It's weird though, look at that. At this size, it's like the, the Apple Pencil Hover isn't sure where to throw it, but you can kind of get it. There we go. Pretty crazy. Uh, but I don't think that's like what most people will do. And as we change it out to different colors, you can still see what it's gonna be. And there's like a little preview of what we're gonna do after. I'm gonna use a big brush and just paint over all of that and I wanna get the, the sky that I made back, so. It's weird, I still find myself defaulting to the size control over there. I don't think like you super need this gesture here. Because um, this solution over here on the left is still really super hyper effective. Let's get some clouds in there and some clouds up top. Looks really cool. I'm into it. Okay, next up is color drop. Uh, I have a file here, which is the basically the cover of my book, Secret Heart Attack. And uh, it's a really complicated flat design. And there are a bunch of flat colors here. We're gonna mess with them. Here is your palette. And as I hover my pencil over it, you can kind of see the colors reacting to it. 
Now, if I go over a certain color and double tap, you're gonna see that I've activated color drop there. And now I can come in and drop that color in, drop it in another place, drop it maybe over here, over there, right? And it's a really quick way to go around with your colors. This, and obviously you're gonna need to like adjust the threshold of the color so it doesn't like leak out into every color you touch but it seems like a really efficient way to change around your flats and change the colors of things as you go fun next up is gallery preview and this is really beautiful when you hover over any artwork in your gallery you can see a little animation as to how it was made so it's pretty cool especially like you know, these more complicated artworks, I can see like how it started and how different it looks from the final. But then like a shorter form sketch like this one over here, you know, you can get from start to finish. It just runs through the entire process really quickly. That's super cool. This is a stock artwork. Doesn't seem to have any process in it. And this is, yeah, it only works for the artworks that you made on the device, I suppose. But that's a really nice quality of life thing. I wanna say though, if you have an older iPad, when you um, hover a mouse cursor over it, it has the exact same effect. So, you know, this isn't just like super exclusive to the Apple Pencil hover thing. You can, you can see it implemented in other ways in other iPads. I covered this already, but it bears really talking about. Brush size and opacity is a major thing here. So I can really mess with the brush size just by pinching to zoom. And it changes it really quickly. And it's nice, it feels a little intuitive, but I have a habit of going over here to these controls. So I don't know how necessary it is to like my workflow, but it's a nice to have. There's also a hover implementation with the selection tool. So when you do freehand selections here, uh, let's say I wanna move Nimrod over here. Uh, I just have to tap to create the starting point. And already I can kinda see where my cursor will go. So it'll just follow the selection. You can still, ooh. It can kind of follow it around really far, which is really cool. But you can still do the thing where you just draw it down, Oops. which is how I would normally do it. But it's kind of nice to be able to see a little preview like that. Boom. And then I can move him around like that. Coming closer to Rogue. Oh no, you're gonna die. Fight him. And two more features, both of which I can't really demo. Uh, but one is called File Compression Improvement. Basically, they've made the program faster for painting and undoing things. Uh, but it's really hard to demonstrate. I don't think I can do a side-by-side -side comparison, so uh, you just have to take their word for it. It feels fast. I never felt it was slow to begin with. So this is kind of like icing on the cake. And lastly is third-party stylus deprecation. Uh, apparently, there's a whole bunch of Apple styluses or styli, well, non-Apple Pencil, non-Apple styluses on the market which haven't been supported well, so Procreate is basically pulling support for them. Uh, I think the only, so now like the only styluses you can use are the Apple Pencil and I think the Logitech Crayon, that's the only other supported one. So I'm just gonna try sketching this for a little bit, see how it feels. It's interesting, doing some freehand sketching right now, it doesn't feel that different. It's strange how, uh, how underwhelming this all feels because the, the Apple commercial really made it look amazing and glorious and like I needed it so bad, but I don't know. I guess it makes a bigger difference if you like to go hard on changing your brush size. But still, I feel like the hover distance is so small that it never really made a difference anyway. By the time I get close enough to 
to make the stroke I want to make, it doesn't feel like there's really been much deliberation. I don't know, I don't feel like it, it makes a big difference for uh, people who work very linearly. I don't know, I feel like maybe I should spend more time with this so I can make an accurate assessment, but honestly my first impressions are kind of like, mm, it's fine, it's cool. It's cool if you have it, but I'm not gonna spend like another like thousand, two thousand bucks for a new iPad just to get this. We'll see. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. The new features are glorious and they can really change how you use the program. But I'm still a little undecided. So I'm gonna spend more time with this M2 iPad Pro and really test it out for a few more days before the return window closes. Stay tuned for the full review. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos on the channel. Uh, I make a lot of videos about how to make comics and just document my process. So yeah, check them out below. Until next time, peace.